Hey, check up. Let's play some D. But I'm throwing this one up. It's, it's leaning easily toward HBO Max and, and, and Euphoria. Euphoria gets the tip this week in first quarter. And it's it's a show. It's a it's a show. It's a it's, it's, I would say it's is is decent, good at best, rather entertaining, and that all kind of is intertwined and interweaved. Just an interesting type of show. Because one of my pet peeves of the show is the lack of dialogue. And they just don't talk enough in, in Euphoria. It's a lot of cinematography, cinematography, but it's cool cinematography. It all, like, works. And it does tell more of a story than you can imagine it does. The different colors and angles and looks. And then there's obviously dramatization, and Zendaya does a good job. Uh, this year, I think his name's Angus Cloud or Fez. He does a good job. Uh, I forgot his real name, but the guy that plays Nate's dad, he bang has a banger in an episode, probably the best episode of the season. And as well as Nate, he does his thing acting wise, and the girls that play Maddie and Cassie. They they are such a great complement to each other and the show, but what they bring in that um, this social media this this pretty girl and drama and attention and yeah, but yeah, you Euphoria is wrapped around you know the, the the things of addiction and things of that nature and they all play their different role with all the different characters and you can, uh, you know, psychoanalyze all that different stuff. Uh, For me personally, I don't dig that deep into that side of it because I don't have those type of issues. So it's kind of hard for me to relate to them. But I know some people, and I've read a lot of people talk about uh, like Zendaya's characters and other characters, Cassie's characters, she's addicted to, you know, like the attention and things of that nature and people having uh, a connection to it and understanding the, those characters and where they come from, you, you know, all over online forums and things of that nature is whether, you know, I don't know if they're trolls or real people or whatever, but you could see the different um, comments and reflections on some of these characters. And yeah, it's a show. So some of it is going to be over overblown and whatever, whatever. But, you know, you got to you got to entertain people. You got to keep people watching. Uh, the show's averaging 16.3 million viewers, which is the best performance of any Season of HBO series over the past years, other than Game of Thrones, which averaged uh, 46 million viewers across its eighth and final season, which is just astronomical. So that's that's an outlier. So 16.3 people watching a week, and that's that's you know that's obviously what they can they can capture. You know, there's another I don't know how many million is watching it in other facets that I won't touch on but that's just a good good nice big number that that'll that, that'll get season three rocking whenever it happens to wrap it all in is that i'm not the i'm not gonna sit up here and say oh wow it's amazing i just think i think the best way to describe the show is it's entertaining it's a good watch for an hour every week to kind of escape to a whole different world and you you, it always brings that um I don't know if it's a mystique but that up that uh those wild moments because you they're they're playing high schoolers and you're like you know people like whose high school is like this my high school wasn't like that or my high school was wild or I've seen stuff and things of that nature and yes stuff can get a little crazy I mean there's multiple high schools all over and uh, some of these kids, some kids do have unlimited access to money and things and parents may be out of town and kicking it and hanging out, you know, you know, who's to say that there isn't some kind of representation of this somewhere. You just, you just, you just don't know. But that, that high school young kid aspect of the show turns some people off and it keeps some, watching and I think that is a, a cool 
take on it as well. Uh, one of the other issues, just side note, is the penises. They just, I wish they would go. Uh, they just, I think it's like a calling card now of just like a troll that the show does, which is kind of funny, but like, we don't really need that. The rest of the stuff, though, I think I think it all goes well. I just think it's so many characters. I just hope in season three they all just get to, to talk more and they actually verbalize the characters instead of cameras panning and, and shots and, and glaring music and sound and bass and uh, suspense. I, I, I want to see the characters. A lot of these, a lot of these characters can act their their butts off. So I, I hope Levinston unleashes them in season three, and we get to see a lot more. I mean, we get to see and Zendaya has her moments in both of them, and then she narrates the show. So as far as her dialogue, it's totally fine. But there's some other characters that um that I would like to just see go, you know, do a little bit of back and forth a little bit more. Uh, I personally still believe that Zendaya's episode with Ali in the diner was the best episode. Once again, the reason I say that because it's dialogue. It um it dug into those two specific characters in a uh, one-on-one setting. And it was dope because you got to dive into those characters. There's really, there's, you know, outside of some backstories and backdrops of like telling who the characters are they don't actually get to tell it really for themselves. Even in uh, Lexi's play, um, it's told through her eyes. It's told through her her story narrated by Zendaya's characters, Rue's character, which is an uh, unreliable narrator that she's already said once before. So the outlook of what you're getting is from uh, her narrating and then through Lexi's storytelling. So you don't really even... Uh, no, you know, what's 100% and what's not. When as if you hear from the characters, I think you just get a little bit more in the dialogue. Uh, I like dialogue. I've all, always liked dialogue and shows. I like the back and forth. I like banter. I like all that stuff. It's one reason why I, I loved um, Billions when when uh, Giamatti and I, forget, I always forget his name, but the guy that played Axe, they were just so good with the dialogue and wags. They just talked and Man, that show, that show is a really good show. But I enjoyed this. I enjoy Euphoria. I'll be ready for season three. Uh, it probably won't be until 2024 or something crazy like that. But I think that'll give people a good amount of anticipation to to get ready for it. And maybe it's maybe it's the end. Maybe that'll be the end. But it's definitely, they're definitely going to come and, and rocking on, on, on season three. They'll, they'll have the, they'll have, much more money and with an audience waiting to see what they can pull off. So decent show. It was a a good season. I think I, I feel like season one was better. This one ended just a little bit unnecessary in some weird kind of ways. There was some episodes in there that didn't really get needed. And the last episode, two episodes didn't have to be, like they didn't have to cram everything into them like I felt like they did. They could have spaced it out a little bit better and eliminated some of those other episodes for sure. Or they could have had um, more episodes. I know that was tough with the COVID and things, but yeah, more episodes probably would have helped more than anything than not 